Boom to the flagship on this Tuesday edition. Bring in uh, a man that, look, we have a theme here on the show where we bring in, we somehow get guys that are constantly, constantly working, constantly busy. Uh, I always use the moniker of the busiest man in sports. I don't know if there's anybody as busy as, uh, as Billy here uh, on threes. Uh, covers LSU, covers SMU, uh, the guys all over the place. We will have him on here to discuss Ole Miss's recent hire of Alex Brown. Uh, was the director of scouting and player personnel at SMU uh, with Rhett Lashley and that staff. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to remind you, the show is always powered by College Corner. If you need Ole Miss gear, look no further than College Corner. They've got three locations, Oxford, Ridgeland, Flowood. And if you cannot get to the brick and mortar, have no fear. You can go to collegecornerstore.com. Get your polos, get your quarter zips, get your tailgating supplies if you want to get out to Swayze Field for some baseball on the weekend, or if you just want to go ahead and start prepping for the Grove this fall. It's collegecornerstore.com. Scott and the folks over there do a great job. They uh, they take care of us, and they will take care of you. Billy, good morning. Welcome in. Um, first of all, covering two two programs with the portal with NIL, I, I mean, a, a lot of people love this wrinkle that has been added to college sports, I, me in particular, because it keeps us busy, but you're, you're, you're double dipping over there. How do you do it? Well, uh, you got to give credit to uh, your wife first, right? <laughs> that's, uh, that's the number one uh, for most of us that, that, that do this job. You know, we, we have to have those people by our sides or be super single and work hard and play hard. So, <laughs> It's two, two, uh, two formulas there, I guess you could do it, but, uh, no, it, it's, uh, I guess it's just trying to prioritize what's important to our subscribers. Uh, that's the number one thing, you know, sometimes if there's, uh, a, you know, a sport that probably sh should get day-to-day -day attention in the real grand scheme of things, maybe you say, you know what, they're not reading that as much. Let's dive into portal. Let's dive into recruiting. A little bit more and so you just kind of prioritize what's what's important for your subscribers and i think that generally makes it pan out and then you just try to be as efficient as possible and i've learned to accept that you can't get everything done i at least i think my wife yeah would say a little something different but you know you you just try and and uh, if you're hustling they're going to recognize that and i i think that's uh that's what makes it fun is is when you give yeah. the subscribers what they want yeah absolutely well said um Speaking of busy folks, uh, Ole Miss head coach Lane Kiffin making additions to the staff, uh, hired Corey Dennis from Ohio State, and he takes the Tulsa OC job, um, quickly has to get back to square one and uh, find someone else, and they land on Alex Brown, as I mentioned at the top of the show, director of scouting, player personnel at SMU. Um, spoke with you last week, um, pretty as you said it, a critical period of roster construction for Lashley and the Mustangs um, won the American last year, a uh, huge year, um, SMU, a lot of buzz around that program. Brown was a big part of that, but just kind of what do you think his impact will be at Ole Miss and, and kind of what, what makes him tick? Like what, what does he do so well that, that has earned him this, this opportunity? Yeah, I think one thing with Alex is that he does a really, really good job on the evaluation side of things and finding players that are maybe in. And actually, it's funny this you, we're talking about this because Lewis Riddick, uh, you know, ESPN talking yeah. about this with NFL teams and how some teams are just so quick to cut bait and then the players get blamed for the situation and all of those things. Well, the same could be said for college. There's a lot of quick blame with that go to players when things aren't working out on a certain level and there are different reasons that things might not be working out or they need to make a change and go to the transfer portal. And so finding those players that maybe just need a better situation, maybe we're going through a tough spell, whether it be they just didn't get along with their coach or they had personal issues or whatever and saying, all right, I see the vision for so-and-so let's, bring them in for a visit, see if the fit's right. And then hopefully if it works out, we can get them on board. And SMU has had some players like that who have really panned out for them. And Alex was a key part in that. Now, SMU has been able to find a lot of players with ties to this coaching staff, particularly from Miami, that have also worked out. 
And at the same time, you have to balance that with what the scouting department is telling you and saying, hey, this might not be a fit. This might not be um, the the right uh, avenue to address a position. I know this past cycle uh, in the transfer portal, for example, they passed on a Miami linebacker who was in there and, you know, they ended up going with another player who had more years and was coming from Utah and Justin Medlock. So that's kind of that balance there. But Alex and his staff have done a really nice job of putting together a good, solid process for the transfer portal. I mean, high school recruiting and evaluations have been around for a while, and and that's certainly something that most colleges don't. I mean, they, they have their own processes, but it it's pretty straightforward at this point. But when it comes to uh, what SMU has been able to do with the transfer portal, they have been excellent in scouting the entire transfer portal or potential portal entrance really well so that when they enter, you can then have your board stacked. All right, so-and-so entered. He's our number two defensive end at this point. So-and-so is is not going to end up portaling. Okay, all right, we can kind of strike him off the list. But they're prepared for that moment where they do, and so they already have the information. They already have him scouted, and they do a good job of looking ahead and saying, okay, these schools, you know, after six games have players that have only played in four games. Let's keep an eye on those four game type of players because they could mm-hmm. be portal guys. All right, let's update it after yeah. 10 games. We're about two weeks out. They just have a really good process for going through the scouting department uh, and, and, and having that ready for the portal. And that's critical for a guy like Lane in particular. Looking at the 23, or I guess the 24 portal class, guys that announced or signed uh, in December of last year. A lot of familiar names for Ole Miss folks. Amari Abor from Ohio State, uh, Nate Anderson from Oklahoma, um, Jafar, uh, Jafari Harvey from Miami. Um, lots of talented dudes that played Power 5 level football that opted to go to SMU uh, when looking for a new home. Ole Miss tried to get a, several of the, the signees that SMU landed. Um, how do you think Alex and just, I guess, just staffs in general approach? Look, because you cover SMU and you cover LSU, so you get the Power Five and the G Five. Um, just that convincing. I, I know NIL plays a huge part. We don't have to be coy or naive about it. Money is a big driving factor for decisions, but guys that have to, you know, humble themselves. You know, a little ego check of, you know, hey, I was at Ohio State, I was at Oklahoma. Now I'm going to go down to a G5 level and not to, you know, scoff at SMU or anything because they're doing a hell of a job there. But how big of a challenge is that for, you know, coaches that you've talked to and just people in the industry of, you know, convincing those guys like, hey, it's, you know, quote unquote, a step down, but you're still going to play and you're still going to get eyeballs on you for the NFL. Yeah, I I think there's there's certain pieces to it that, probably are a little bit more challenging at at some points. Like right now, SMU has a loaded wide receiver room of guys that are all coming back. There's like six or seven guys in their final year of college football. So they knew, even though they need somebody in a big way to step up and be a wide receiver one this year, they knew that they one needed to go find one player with uh, years and, and term left in his college career so that the position maybe isn't as barren last uh next year it was going to be harder to go out and find a wide receiver one so they're just going to kind of try and roll with what they had and hope somebody develops those are similar issues to what you see across college football like last year lsu probably needed believe it or not one more guy to come in at that wide receiver spot but you didn't want to upset everything that was going on with the malik neighbors and a brian thomas kyron lacy they wanted to retain their roster those type of issues face colleges all the time. And so with SMU, that's positionally something they battle with wide receivers, even though they have, and I might be totally wrong on this stat, like as it stands, but in the last like 10 years, I think SMU has had the most or maybe second most drafted wide receivers in the state of Texas out of the colleges. It's a pretty good group that's been up there. Cole Beasley, um, or maybe it was active receivers in the NFL. Cole Beasley, yeah. Emmanuel Sanders, Cortland Sutton, Trey Quinn at one point. 
um, uh, Rasheed Rice, Danny Gray. I mean, they have wide receivers. So you look at that track record, but at the end of the day, guys want to play, and they usually are leaving to get maybe a little bit more of a wink and a nod that they're going to be able to play somewhere um, and play a lot when they transfer. But with some of the guys that they brought in on the defensive line last year, they had the ties to Miami and Jordan Miller and Elijah Roberts. Jafari Harvey was one this year who turned down a late push from A&M to go to SMU. Um, Calvin Thibodeau was at OU for years developing players. That's a guy who has a proven track record. So they can walk those lines of, okay, at that point, they were recruiting them for the AAC. And a guy like Jordan Miller, who had one year left. But there is a path where you can impress and you can find your way to the NFL. And SMU's shown that at certain positions um, that, they've, that they've had success with in the past and guys getting drafted or, or getting extended looks at the NFL. But it's, it's just kind of a tough line to walk. There are some players that can say – themselves if i go in there and do what i need to do i can be out of here in a year with my stock as high as it could possibly ever be and and that's my goal and that's what jordan miller did he ended up getting a a shrine bowl invite and he's probably going to be a guy that maybe could sneak into the late rounds being drafted as a nose tackle but he played his best college football this year at smu and put some great film together against tcu ou even boston college he was a guy that they really relied on and and now his stock is you know at i mean i don't think it would have gotten much higher at miami if he had stayed one more year so sure. he's he's uh an example of when you can drop down and shine that much um it, it can pay off for you and so uh there's also guys that want to come back to texas and play out the rest of their college careers and so there's a bunch of different pieces to it but the g5 thing for smu in the past was an issue with certain players, I mean, Baylor snagged. Um, he didn't end up doing anything, but who's the tight end? Uh, Jake Roberts, who uh, oh. I think ended up catching about 150 yards of passes, whereas SMU has like the, its last three starting tight ends that are all in the NFL. They're going to have another one in RJ Maryland go eventually. So um, he ended up basically silenting to SMU and then ended up going to Baylor. And Keytron Jackson was the same way, and he didn't do anything at Baylor. So uh it's it's one of those things i mean sometimes the grass isn't always greener and i mean you look at a guy like branson hickman and marcus bryant who are in the portal two offensive linemen who have started 30 something games you look at some of the stats around guys who jump up from group of five to power five who were all all conference and their percentage chance of being drafted or ending up on a training camp roster actually goes down so sometimes it's a it's a tough line to walk with all of that the College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Sisk Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. Call Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group. He can help you with any of your health insurance needs. Drew is an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi and licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35 different carriers, regular health plans, to life insurance, to dental and vision, and even Medicare. He has it all covered. Now more than ever, it is critical to have a health insurance agent who is local and accessible. So call Drew Moak at 601-953-8449. 601-953-8449 and get your free quote today. The car buying process can be a lot. I know, I've been there. You just want to get in and out with a new car and the best deal. Simple. Alan Samuels Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Oxford keeps it simple. They're going to take care of you, get you in and out with your new vehicle with a great deal. Their inventory right now is priced to sell, and what separates Alan Samuels Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Oxford from any and all competitors is they aim to address each of your needs with the utmost respect, care, and attention to detail. Contact them today at 662-234-8000. That's 662-234-8000. Stop by and see them in person at 2201 East University Avenue in Oxford. That's Alan Samuels Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Oxford to find your next perfect car, truck, or Jeep. 
Alan Samuels. Let's be friends. Last thing on NIL before we switch to talking a little recruiting for 2025 and, and take a look at LSU and what they have for 24. I was talking to somebody about this on Sunday about kind of the, the perception of NIL when it was first introduced. And, and I was thinking, oh, this is going to be so fun. You're going to have offensive linemen, you know, getting sponsored by a, a barbecue place. Games, or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a burger, you know, whatever. And I know it's kind of, quickly evolved into hey it's just you know we saw with cam ward fortune 500 company um you know jackson darted Ole miss gets a private jet company but there has to be some kind of cool local thing that the metroplex can do with king large because that is easily one of the best names in college football but just like somebody's got to do like a, a, a king size meal with king large or you know something like that i mean the opportunities have got to be there right oh yeah and he he and his family actually moved to dallas he's finishing up his high school career online for saint john bosco which i didn't even know they could do uh, but i guess <laughs> shout out to COVID on figuring that out but yeah uh, yeah king large is gonna have some large opportunities i would imagine <laughs> if he pans out He's he's one of those names that you hope pans out just because, from the name perspective. I mean, it's yeah. it's got to be uh, something that they can actually capitalize on with some sort of deal, yeah. like a, a real, you know, even if it like um, Decoldus Crawford. You know, I don't think I was, he's really done too much. I was uh, just about to say it was like yeah, a collective, but, like a collective groan on Twitter and on the internet when he got hurt because everybody was like, "Ah, oh, we want to see him like excel and, and and be in commercials and yeah." No, I, I, I agree. I, I would like to see some more businesses, like smaller ones, maybe take advantage a little bit. They can write the, that off. That's the thing about businesses that it's kind of, I'm surprised we haven't seen more and maybe we just don't hear about it, but more real like entries into the NIL space with some local businesses with colleges. We see it some, but mm. I just thought it would be a little bit more pronounced. Like if you're a, you know, even a uh, out of town business owner who I I don't know. It just seems like for a write off for marketing, it just seems like there were there hasn't been as me- yeah. much capitalization there. Yeah. Um. So let's get into twenty five. Quick recruiting note here. Um. Keelan Russell, four star quarterback from Duncanville, state champion. Um. Uh, committed to SMU last September, but people are still blowing up the phones. People are still coming and calling. I know Ole Miss is one of those. I know you've seen him in person. I've yet to see him live, but um, it doesn't take much when you turn the tape on to see why he's special and why people want him. Uh, kind of what's the latest with him and, and kind of your your own amateur scout, you know, scouting report on, on what he brings to the table. And who is that? It just broke up the first part. Uh, Keelan Russell, quarterback from. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Keelan, Keelan's a really talented prospect. I mean, he he has a lot of the tools that you look for in a power five starting quarterback. I mean, his arm talent really impresses me from the standpoint of he can put it wherever he wants. And mm-hmm. I think that's really important at the next level. And and he does and he's got a, an ability to move around, an ability to extend plays. He's in a offense with loaded playmakers. So there is that piece to it. But his offensive line isn't one that I sit here and say, oh, this is a you know, monster offensive line that he kind of ran for his life at certain points this year and was able to make those off schedule type of throws and make them look really impressive. So I like the fact that he's just scratching the surface Mm -hmm. on his talent. I'm intrigued to see where this one goes. And there are, there is going to be an elevated platform for SMU now that they're in the ACC. And I mean, that's undeniable. Florida state's coming to Dallas they're going to Louisville. They're playing a good out of conference schedule, all of those things. But will Texas, will Texas A&M end up turning up the heat? I know A&M's trending for Hassan Longstreet. Uh, Texas already has KJ Lacey committed, but will those guys stay committed? Will those guys, you know, be a part of a two quarterback class? Those are things that I'm kind of watching. I do think there is a little bit of a draw for Keelan to explore his options and look at some of these you know, truly already established programs at the power conference level. 
and Ole Miss is one of them. He was they were right there as a finalist when he made his early decision in September. But mm. uh, I don't I don't know where we'll see this go. There there's there's enough buzz that it's it, we're all kind of sitting here watching and saying, okay, all right, can they find a way to hold on to him? I think it's going to be really difficult if Texas and Texas A and M turn up the heat. It's more of a toss up if an Ole Miss or I mean even a Florida with their coaching staff situation, um, it, it might be a little bit more dicey for them yeah. to keep them if, if, uh, if they, you know, turn up the heat. I, I know he likes Ole Miss, but will he go that far? Um, his family drove all the way to Florida for that visit. And that's, that's, I mean, they drove there Friday and then drove back Sunday. I mean, and I don't know if they have the means to fly to Orlando, rent a car, do games, but you know, yeah. Hey, hey, that's why that's why there's NIL though. If you're a starting quarterback in Florida, I mean, you would hope that they could take yeah. care of them. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be that one's gonna be really interesting. Okay. Uh, before we get into this uh, final segment, talk LSU, kind of preseason hype and buzz around that program. Do want to remind you, the podcast also brought to you by USA Benefits Group and Drew Moak. If you're looking to cut your health insurance premiums by twenty to thirty percent. Aging into Medicare, you need to find a supplement plan. Look no further than Drew Moak and USA Benefits Group. You can give them a call 601-953-8449 or go check them out, usabg.com slash D-M-O-A-K and get your free quote today. He's got access to 35 different carriers. He can help you with any and all of your health insurance needs, dental, vision, Medicare, life insurance, it's licensed in seven states, and he's an Ole Miss grad. So having someone that is local and accessible is critical when it comes to health insurance. And Drew Moak has got you covered. Check him out, USA Benefits Group, 601-953-8449. All right, a lot of hype around LSU uh, going into uh, 2024. I know we're into talking season. And, <clears throat> look, Brian Kelly has – done a fantastic job at LSU since he's gotten there. It certainly helps to have the Heisman Trophy winner, Jaden Daniels, lighten everybody up, including Ole Miss in one of the best games of the season last year. Um, Jaden Daniels is gone. Uh, I think it's now – the keys have been handed to Nussmeyer, I, I presume, but uh, I was a little surprised at the lack of movement in the portal defensively for LSU. And, and, and look, some of the staff – some of the additions that uh, Bo Davis is loud. Um, that's a big one, but yeah, just it's to me, you know, they kind of double triple down on, <laughs> on Perkins staying on the inside, um, w- which I think you would agree. I think everybody agrees. He was much more effective coming off the edge, but what, what's, what's kind of the, the buzz around the building in Baton Rouge, you know, post, you know, life post J Dane Daniels and, and losing those wide receivers that are so talented. Yeah, there's buzz around this program to be I mean, the goal is be in Atlanta. I mean, that that's the reality of of being at LSU and I think we're all misses too right now. I mean, I'm sure that's what what everybody is expecting and mm-hmm. the the interesting piece that piece is, is that I'm a Garrett Nussmeyer fan. I mean, I I was there for his first start in high school back when he was a sophomore. I was there when he started his junior year, started his senior year. So, seen a lot of him and he's he's matured a lot. And we saw in the bowl game what he could put together. And I mean, he absolutely impressed. And now Malik neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr. Those guys are gone. Um, They do return pretty much their entire starting offensive line. They do have a guy like Kyron Lacey. They did bring in a Xavion Thomas from Mississippi state. They brought in a CJ Daniels from Liberty. I mean, really impressive additions there. They're they need somebody to step up at running back. This offense is could look very different. Garrett's always going to push the ball down the field a little bit. So that uh, drive will be there on that front. But Jaden fixed a lot of things with his legs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Brian Thomas, Malik neighbors, they fixed a lot of things just being first round type of draft picks. Um, they, they have questions and that's, that's going to be what makes this team a little a little more fun maybe uh, to cover in a, in a weird sense, because they're going to be learning. They're going to be uh, having to develop. And this story of this team might be 
a real interesting one. What I like about what Brian Kelly's done is he upgraded the defensive coaching in a big, big way. Bo Davis, Blake Baker, Corey Raymond, Jake Dolson, all those guys they brought in. Um, even bringing in Slade Nagel at tight ends coach to work with Joe Sloan. They're already close. Both have been coordinators before at the college level, so they can work with the already established staff to really mesh well. Um, I think the coaching staff is in a really, really strong position. Um, and so if they can make some of the adjustments that are needed on defense, find a way to get a little more out of those guys, I think we're going to see, obviously it can't get much worse, but uh, you're going to see a little bit uh, of an improvement there. I am a little concerned on some of the players that they bought uh, brought in, in a sense, um, when it comes to the, to the defensive side. You know, Jordan Gilbert from A&M was hurt last year. Uh, they do bring in um, – uh, who else did they bring in? They brought in uh, Jair Brown, who hasn't played much in his career. Austin Osbury hasn't played much in his career, and that's uh, that. That might be it, unless I'm missing something, someone. Uh, but so there's some questions. Um, but they also have a lot of returning players. They all also have a lot of second year players like Whit Weeks, JV, and Toviano. Uh, they've got some transfers who are now settled in from uh, last year's roster when they first made their way to Baton Rouge. So uh, again, I mean, this is an interesting team. I, there's a chance that, I mean, you can probably go from eight and five to, I mean, maybe undefeated. I mean, that's a, if Garrett Nussmeyer can click on that level, maybe it's just a better situation with the defensive side of the ball, just enough to push them over the top, get them to Atlanta, got the changes at Alabama. Uh, I don't think, uh, Auburn's on the schedule for the first time in in however many years, and that's always a, a massive game. Florida's down. Ole Miss and LSU have been getting a, getting after it lately. Who knows what Texas A and M looks like? There's all sorts of questions on the schedule, and LSU's expectations are though to get to Atlanta, and they have some pieces. It just needs to come together. One name you didn't mention that I'm I'm curious to get your thoughts on AJ Swan, quarterback from Vandy. Uh, I thought when he was healthy, he could spin it pretty well. He was obviously limited playing for Vanderbilt, but I, I thought that, um, you know, when he entered the portal, I figured somebody's going to get a, a ready-made starter that's played a lot of SEC football, or someone's going to have some, you know, a guy that could be a backup and, and take over when the, uh, you know, starter leaves. But what's the early returns on, on his arrival in, in Baton Rouge? Yeah, I, I still think this is Garrett Nussmeyer's uh, car to uh, drive into the season. We'll see what kind of car it ends up being offensively. But A.J. Swan is kind of a veteran guy who they feel good about having on the roster. He's still got to learn the offense. He hasn't been around as much. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he's going through, you know, that change. And they only had a few spring practices before spring break. So they're just getting back to it tomorrow. Uh, so we don't know too much. I'm I'm like you. I'm I'm interested to see how his spring game unfolds and what he looks like and how many first team opportunities they give him. Cause you know, you need to, I mean, they've got AJ Swan, Ricky Collins, who's a red shirt freshman, then Colin Hurley, a true freshman. So yeah, they need to have him ready. If he's their guy to stick, you know, keep on the roster. Two quick hitters before we let you go. Um, two players who made the trek from LSU to Ole Miss. Uh, Deion Smith, who, Talking about a trek, it was a winding road to get to Ole Miss, but it, it looks like he has finally made it. Um, I know it was just one season. There were some flashes, but what were your take you know, on him as, as an LSU Tiger, and what did coaches think of him? I know he's uber talented, and he lit up the JUCO ranks uh, this past fall, but how do you think he fits in with Lane Kiffin's offense in that receiver room? Yeah, I, I'm really high on Deion Smith. I mean, if he if he puts it together, uh, he's going to be special. I mean, he showed that so much throughout the early part of – or late part of high school and then, you know, a little bit at LSU. Yeah, I, 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 if if he's all settled and, you know, in the right headspace and all of those things, I mean, he's he's one of those guys that just stands out in just about every way. So, yeah, like you said, didn't get to see too much of him, but he is that good from a, from a talent perspective. So. If, yeah. if you guys had screwed on right, I mean, things could be pretty fun there for, for Ole Miss fans at least. 
Last one. It's, it's been kind of a hot button topic because it's kind of gone back and forth with a lot of people. I, I wouldn't call it a source off, but it's just been something that people are all over the place with. I was told when Ole Miss signed him, the expectation was he'd be ready by SEC play. Logan Diggs had the knee injury, goes to Ole Miss. All signs still from people I have spoken with point to him being ready mid-September uh, to be ready to hit the ground running and go alongside Ulysses Bentley. Um, I know he was super productive at LSU. I thought he was a great fit in that offense. He was excellent. Um, down the stretch before the injury, but how do you think he he meshes with with Kiffin and you know his his spread option attack? Yeah, it's funny. I knew Ulysses Bentley back at SMU too, so yeah, uh, I know a good bit of that backfield all of a sudden. But yeah, if Logan could get healthy, I mean he'll he'll be just solid. I mean he's steady. He's kind of a pro in a sense, which is good for Ulysses to have too. Just another guy who's uh, just got that veteran mentality, and they can keep each other fresh and things like that. But <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a quick, it's a quick turnaround for, for that uh, injury. So, I mean, you kind of look at, look at the months. I mean, he can do it. He could be ready for SEC play. I don't know where the rehab uh, stands though uh, on that front. Billy, before I let you go again, you're all over the place. Let uh, the folks know where they could find you. Um, I know you're uh, on the Pony Express and Bengal Tiger, but uh Give, it, give your folks a shout out and, and let them know where they can uh, follow you on Twitter and whatnot. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Billy Embody, E-M-B-O-D-Y, and you can check us out at thebengaltiger.com. Shay Dix, Dixon, myself, Matthew Bruni, uh, doing the work on the LSU side of things. And then on theponyexpress.com, we've got all the SMU coverage. So should be fun. Always looking forward to uh, getting over to Oxford at some point soon. So uh, my guy, uh, Randall Joyner, is, is over there. He used to play with him at SMU, so gonna have yeah. to uh, get over there soon randall's a uh he, he's he's good people with a capital g he's yeah. uh he's one of my favorites but well billy i appreciate the time i know that uh th this this little window you carved out for us was was great uh great talking with you i'm sure we'll catch up uh down the road and and look hey big 2024 for smu and the acc that's that, that's gonna be fun yeah thanks so much for having me i appreciate it it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast we'll see see how it goes that's Billy Embody of On3 on the Pony Express, Bengal Tiger. We appreciate him. We appreciate College Corner and USA Benefits Group sponsoring the show. Stay locked in. OMSpirit.com will have portal coverage, spring footballs around the corner, basketball, women's hoops, getting uh, the tournament underway this weekend. So big ups to Billy for joining, and uh, big ups to you, the listener, for tuning in as well. This has been the flagship. Until Wednesday, we'll talk to you all later.